Hello again, and welcome to another edition of the Language Fuel podcast. We're again using this video format. Obviously, we still have the audio format too. So uh, if you're listening while driving your car or something, obviously you won't be seeing me, but it's, um, I got some good feedback on having a few audio, uh, sorry, a few video versions. So uh, we'll continue doing that as we can. Now, today's episode is all about swearing or profanity or cursing or cussing, uh, whatever word you might use to talk about those bad words. Uh, in English, we sometimes say the four-letter words because many of them do have four letters. Obviously, in other languages, they wouldn't necessarily have four letters, so that doesn't sort of make sense. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why we're talking about this today. So Firstly, as many of you are aware, we run here at Language Field the resource room in New Zealand. So we're selling a bunch of you know, textbooks and, and workbooks and dictionaries and that sort of thing for, for language teaching and learning. And I had a teacher order a bunch of books for end of year. We're coming up to the end of the academic year here in New Zealand. And she wanted some prizes for you know the year year eight, um, best student in, in Spanish, year nine, and, and that sort of thing. So there was a... Um, <clears throat> box full of, of goodies for the students um, and one of them was this book here and um, obviously if you're listening and don't see the video you won't be able to see the the picture of it but it's a, a little tiny book of idioms called word up and it's a Spanish this particular one is Spanish I, I think they do have in different languages although this is the only one we have in stock here in Spanish and it's as it says, just a book of idioms. So it's not a traditional dictionary in the sense that you can't just look up any word and find its meaning, but it has idioms such as, I mean, if I just open a random um, page here under H, this is, you know, translating an English idiom into Spanish for the first half of the book, it's got things for hacked off, um, which, you know, there's another one, half asked. Uh, there's another one, let's see, hang out hanky panky uh, I'm not even going to read the next one um, hell yeah is a is an entry so the point is it's really idiomatic just sort of street language if you like just the phrases that we would say in English and then on the other side they've got um, the Spanish so if you're hearing Spanish idioms and, and kind of street language and you want to know what the equivalent is in English so I you know I'm not super good at Spanish, but um, just looking at some of the translations that they're providing, this one here at the top here says to hit the town, you know, obviously to go out. Uh, another one here, marijuana, so translating what that word is. Uh, another one here, the third one down, the translation, uh, and if you're listening, excuse me here, but bullshit, crap is the translation, uh, and so on. Bloke, geezer bird, uh, to gossip, and so on. So it's really street language, very slangy. Obviously, there's swear words in there and profanity. So this, the teacher had ordered this package of, you know, end of year prizes for her students. And she called me up after she'd received the package. She said, look, I'm just not quite sure that this particular idioms book is suitable for a year eight student, which is what she had intended. And if those of you not in New Zealand, year eight, the students are sort of 12 or 13 years old. And I said, look, totally fine to accept that. So she returned it and she got another little pocket dictionary for that uh, particular student. So, you know, fair enough. Not really suitable, I don't think, if I was the parent, if, if my 13-year-old daughter came home with a book like this and I saw that she was learning these kinds of words, I don't think I'd be super impressed with the teaching staff for having given them. So the question is, today, should we teach our students swear words in the target language for, for those of us who are teaching languages? Um, now, I have to say we have other items in the resource room that do sell well, that do have slang words in them. So, for example, we have these little um, wristbands, you know, the sort of silicon wristbands, they're quite popular. Um, and they're, they're very slangy. So this is a German one. We have them in, in all the different languages. So it says, so sieht spitze aus. So this is what you know, cool looks like or something. Um, it's got some text language and the little purple one here. Um, WGVG says, was gibt's, you know, what's up sort of thing. Um, GG, GGG, ganz großes Grinsen, um, really big grin. So I guess it's perhaps what we would say, lol, you know, laugh out loud. So that made me smile or something like that. So sort of text kind of language. Um, we've got this little yellow one here that says, egal, with a 
tongue smiley face like whatever kind of so it's all very you know slangy those are very popular as they're not offensive though they are slang uh, street language but they're not offensive we've also got a bunch of stickers again they sell super well teachers love to put little stickers on on their students works and you know they're all text kind of slang language lach mich tot um, the german you know I'm, I'm dying laughing i guess that would be like a roll on the floor laughing ruffle r-o-f-l um, so, you know, all that sort of stuff does sell very well. And I think as a teenager, if I was learning, you know, languages at a high school, I think that would be awesome. I'd love to, you know, learn some text speak. And if I was to, you know, hop on the uh, social media, Twitter or Facebook, and I'd be seeing if I was encouraged to try to converse in the language that I was learning, I would be seeing these kinds of acronyms and, and street language. So I think it's definitely very useful. But I think swear words come into a slightly different category there uh, because they are offensive to many people. So the question is, should I teach it? And I have heard over the years, um, certainly when I was teaching English, different teachers are in different camps here. You know, no, this, it's inappropriate. We shouldn't teach our students to be swearing in, in English. Um, other teachers say, well, it's just part of language. It is people use these words. So isn't it better that we tell our students uh, what, what they mean and make sure they're not making errors of judgment in using these words because they'll hear them it doesn't mean they should necessarily use them. Um, so this morning on the on the radio on the way to into work, which is really quite timely, th there was an interview by an, an academic called Sarah Byrne. And now I, I haven't figured out, I, I only caught the second half of the interview, so I don't actually know which university she's working at. But she's published this book that says, Why Swearing is Good for You, The Amazing Science of Bad Language. It's on Amazon. We don't have any here at the resource room, although I'd be uh, perfectly happy to get some in if anybody uh, in New Zealand or Australia wants to, to grab a copy of that. I'll certainly get that for you. Um, and it was fascinating listening to her talking to the radio host. And she talked about many things. And so one of them was the fact that swearing is actually a stress relief. Uh, for people in a stressful situation. I mean, the classic, you know, think hitting your hammer with a, this, or hitting your thumb with a hammer when you're hammering in a nail. Uh, the first thing that comes out of your mouth is probably not a, a very nice word. So it's just, it's a, uh, a really frustration, uh, a relief, uh, a release of, of anger or, or, or frustration. So she was saying it's actually healthy for us, which is why the title of her book, you know, Why Swearing is Good for You. It's healthy to express our emotion rather than hold it in. So the question is, well, why, why would a, a bad word be a, a, an emotional release? You know, why does that work? And so what she says is if you think about what all of the traditional swear words mean, they're all kind of taboo words. They're on topics and, you know, parts of the body, bodily functions that we traditionally don't talk about in polite company, I guess, or that you would talk about in private um, amongst family members. And she said it starts very early on um, at potty training. So little toddlers, you know, one years old, two years old, learning how to use the potty instead of using a, a diaper or a nappy. Um, they need to learn the words for their bodily functions and parents tell them, you know, these are things that we're going to do in the bathroom, uh, in private, we're going to shut the door and we're going to do this here because we really don't want to, it's a bit stinky, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So they learn about shame because toddlers and babies, they don't have shame. They really, they grow up, uh, you know, when they're born, there is no shame. They're just who they are. And it's, it, you know, adults find that beautiful and wonderful. Uh, but at some point we need to teach our children that some things are private. So they learn about what's publicly acceptable versus what's privately acceptable. And there becomes um, a little bit of embarrassment, a little bit of shame around um, toileting words, potty words. And so in the, uh, in the interview, she was explaining, you know, very quickly you'll hear little children when they get angry with each other, they'll start to use these potty words. And so they might call each other poo face and, and things like that. And they're expressing their emotion. They've realized that these have, these are highly charged words because they've associated with these actions that they have learned are not meant to be, you know, public. Um, so the fascinating thing, what I found very interesting about her, uh, her research and the way she was talking with the interview was that even chimpanzees learn the same thing. So, you know, a lot of linguists have uh, in the past studied sign language amongst primates. And so they, there are plenty of studies where they show teaching 
apes and chimpanzees, you know, one of the famous one, I think, from decades ago that Noam Chomsky, you know, in, in the Noam Chomsky era was Nim Chimsky, um, a famous chimp who learned sign language. And they often live with the researchers. So it's quite an intense way of, you know, doing research, but they teach them sign language and they can pick up, you know, a couple hundred words and so they sort of end up being at toddler speak they don't seem to go much further than than our human equivalent of toddler speak um, but they also they they say you know researchers who are living with these primates tend to want to toilet train them so that it's much more convenient I suppose so the exact same thing happens and they learn the word for dirty which apparently she said was sort of a, a, a I guess in American sign language, I'm not quite sure. In fact, I think she had a British accent, but I don't know what version of sign language she was teaching, but the, the sign for dirty was something like that with the, the hand under the chin. And these primates learned, um, you know, they used that word for potty and that sort of thing. And then they learned that that was a, a word associated with these strong emotions. And when they got angry or frustrated with the researcher, you know, that they couldn't go play, they had to perhaps do an experiment or, you know, do some more, some more research kind of work. Um, they would get angry and say, you know, dirty Roger or whatever the name of the researcher was and sort of swear at him basically and use these highly emotional words to express their frustration. You know, I want to go play. I don't want to be sitting here doing these active actions that you're asking me to do. So, just really interesting how it's a it's a very instinctual behavior both in humans and primates that the words that are associated with their high emotions a bit of shame and so on and privacy um, those are the words that we want to throw out there when we're expressing our emotions um, so all of that to say very fascinating interview that I was listening to and again if you if you'd like me to get it in the resource room for, for New Zealand and Australian customers, I'd be very happy to do so and we can sell that book here. So it's uh, by Sarah Byrne, Why Swearing is Good for You. Um, so back to the question originally, should we be teaching our students swear words? Now, the, the teacher who returned this book to me, the, uh, the idiomatic one where, you know, a, a 13 year old gets this and sort of starts learning, you know, all these words in Spanish, they're not gonna have a really good understanding of, you know, if, if this is the only way they've learnt them through a book, they're not going to necessarily have a very good understanding of the appropriateness of some of these words. So I would fully agree with the teacher who sent this back and say, yep, not really appropriate for that level. However, adults certainly and older teenagers absolutely as well, I, in my opinion, why not explain to them, hey, these are swear words. And just like in our mother tongue, but all languages have them, these are words that we don't use very often. Um, they are offensive to many people, but you will hear them and you'll probably see them on social media if you're trying to practice your language on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever, you know, discussion forums on the internet, you will see these words. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you should be using them. Uh, it's probably not appropriate unless you want to be offending some people. So, you know, the, the full, when you're teaching any vocabulary, we do need to go into the full impact that those words have. Nothing is kind of plain and simple. Um, you know, there's a full elocutionary force that needs to be understood behind several words, especially swear words. So if we're teaching them appropriately and helping our learners understand the context in which they could be used well, I don't see a problem with it. Um, adults certainly understand swearing in their own language. Some people would use it more than others, uh, but you know, that everybody understands it. it at a certain level of maturity. Um, so yeah, that's my opinion. I think it's appropriate in certain circumstances if you've taught it well. Um, so that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that. That was episode number 42. Uh, if you've been hanging around, you'll know we uh, have also recently launched the Language Fuel Academy. So we're in December now, December 2017. Until the end of the month, we're still having our foundation membership special. I'd love to see you there. We've got a bunch of courses that we've published online all about language learning, language teaching, and premium members get access to all of the courses. So if you're interested, have a look, do a couple of the free trials just to see if, you know, there's the kind of thing that would be of useful to you. And um, we'd love to see you join up as a foundation member just to get things going. We do have a good little group now that is a foundation um, group. Uh, and from 2018, we'll be putting a regular pricing structure in place for, so you can become a member at any stage. But, you know, it'd be great to see you soon. Talk to you later. Kaki Tiano.